People have gone mad trying to understand mathematical infinity, but this video puts forward the idea that we have mathematical infinity because we have a potential infinity of future possibilities and opportunities that forms the uncertainty of everyday life. This can be explained by physics because in this theory time and space are emergent properties formed by a physical process of continuous energy exchange with the future continuously coming into existence light photon by light photon. Therefore quantum mechanics represents the physics of time as a physical process the spontaneous absorption and emission of light represented by the quantum wave particle function or probability function forms the uncertainty known as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle this represents the same uncertainty we have with any future event. The wave-particle duality of light is continuously forming a blank canvas that we can interact with, turning the possible into the actual. This is what we are seeing when we see an artist at work. We are seeing new light-photon oscillations or vibrations coming into existence relative to the energy and momentum of the artist. In this theory, the individual is an interactive part of creation, and because the photon is also the carrier of the electromagnetic force, electrical potential is linked to our future potential, with the electrical activity in the brain representing the most advanced part of this universal process. Therefore, conscious thought is always in the moment of now, with a continuous stream of thoughts and ideas that can comprehend this process as time, as an interactive process of continuous creation with a potential future infinity of possibilities. This theory can explain the paradoxes of infinity because we have a process of continuous creation that we see and feel as time but has the geometry of space-time. A mathematician will interact with this universal process, continuously forming his or her own space-time geometry. Therefore, it is only logical that he will be able to divide that geometry into infinitely smaller parts as time unfolds. The universe is dynamic and expanding, and this forms the infinities of human mathematics. In this diagram, we have infinity between the whole numbers 1 and 2. The finite part of this series can be made as close as you like to the whole number 2, but will never actually reach it. This infinity between each whole number must represent something fundamental in the structure of our universe. Aristotle's idea of something being potentially infinite went some way to explaining this, but only a deeper understanding of time as a continuous process forming the geometry of space-time with a potential infinity of future events can give us a total explanation. The mathematician George Cantor found a structure to infinity. He found that you could build up a never-ending tower of larger and larger infinities from below but he realized that infinity could not be approached from above. The more we depart from zero and approach greater and greater numbers, the more we depart from infinity. This makes logical sense in this theory. The zero represents zero time, or t equals zero, the moment of now, formed by light interacting with matter. The zero represents an infinite branching point, with the positive numbers marching off, forming a potential future, with a square of probability. The negative numbers receding towards a limitless past, representing the positive and negative of electromagnetic waves. This whole process can be seen as a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking. There is an infinite number of line symmetries within a sphere, 
and also an infinite number of rotational symmetries. This is where the infinities come from that we find in mathematics and this process also forms the potential infinity of possibilities and opportunities of everyday life. It would be logical if time was formed by this process that represents a spontaneous absorption and emission of light that time would expand out in every direction in three-dimensional space with the expansion of the universe but this is not what we observe time is two-dimensional with a past and future and a timeline forming an arrow of time that modern physics cannot explain this line symmetry is formed because when the light comes in contact with matter it forms a photon-electron coupling forming the magnetic moment or dipole moment this forms matter-antimatter -matter annihilation in just one direction forming the arrow of time within that reference frame when the spherical symmetry is broken it forms spiral symmetry forming the imperfect spiral symmetry that is visible in nature as the Fibonacci spiral because the process is universal intelligent life will form its own broken symmetry out of this process forming its own future relative to its energy and momentum of its own actions in this theory creation is truly in the hand and eye of the beholder there are many videos on YouTube that say the universe is a hologram and that everything is just an illusion but even a hologram needs a physical process to produce and maintain it as a three-dimensional image if our universe is a hologram or uses the holographic principle in some way then this process must be universal and woven into the fabric of space and time I believe such a process would not work like a piece of holographic film interacting with a laser the process would have the dynamic geometry of three-dimensional space-time with a built-in symmetry at every moment of time in fact the process would look very similar to what we are seeing in this video clip this might sound odd but if we look at these images from the International Space Station we can see that a candle flame in near zero gravity naturally forms a sphere the candle flame is interacting with the environment on the two-dimensional surface of the sphere if our eyes were more sensitive to the light we would be able to see that everything is radiating electromagnetic radiation or light continuously this is because the universe is never at absolute zero the outer surface of the sphere has positive curvature but relative to the radiating light of the candle flame the inner surface has the negative curvature that is needed for hyperbolic geometry this forms a dynamic process in three-dimensional space instead of a boundary circle we have a boundary sphere the infinite nature of hyperbolic geometry can be represented on the negative curvature of the interior surface of the light sphere in this way we have the three dimensions of everyday life with Euclidean geometry within three-dimensional space formed by one dynamic process that is based on hyperbolic geometry the spontaneous absorption and emission of light forms a process of continuous energy exchange or what I like to call continuous creation this will be relative to the flow of electric charge with the future coming into existence light photon by light photon with each new photon electron coupling or dipole moment because the photon is also the carrier of the electromagnetic force the interactive nature of the wave particle duality of light forms a holographic principle by encoding a description of the volume of space on the boundary of the wave function in the form of electric charge the greatest effect this process of continuous energy exchange has on us is the aging process with photon energy from the Sun cascading down forming greater degrees of freedom for the continuous increase in entropy or disorganization 
But above all, this is a creative process, with the future coming into existence relative to the energy and momentum or actions of each individual life form. We have an infinite number of line symmetries within a sphere, representing an infinite number of possible timelines for future possibilities and opportunities. Within this geometrical process, the momentum of the light will always be at right angles to the surface of the sphere, and it is because of this dynamic geometry that electromagnetic fields are always at right angles to each other. The two-dimensional surface of the sphere forms a dynamic boundary condition, with the inner concave surface and the outer convex surface giving us a geometrical reason why we have negative and positive charge with the flow of electromagnetic waves. Please subscribe and rate. It will help in the promotion of this theory that changes our view of the universe and our place within it.